Movement. Oh, new video, new Trump video, new Trump video. Oh, a rare Trump. This is rare post indictment Trump. Okay. It's not always, you don't always get one of these. It's like a Pokemon card. Okay. Oh my God. It's four minutes long. Oh my God. Political opponent right before the election year. I don't know about this. This is not smell right. Charlie Hurt. Thanks so much. We're going to bring in President Trump's attorney, Alina Haba. So just to yes, summarize, Alina Haba, my queen. The indictment, the former president has just announced this on Truth Social, that he has been informed by his attorneys that he will be indicted over what he calls the boxes hoax. Alina, what can you tell us? I can tell you that's exactly how I would characterize this for the president to be indicted for something that every other president, every other non-president, including vice presidents, uh, have done shows what a sick world we are living in. I am petrified for the country at the moment, Jesse. Um, sad for my client, although he is resilient and strong. And it just tells me once again why we need him back in the White House. It is a, a very sad state of affairs in this country. Have you spoken to the former president since this happened? Have you had any conversations with his legal team? What's the sense there? Um, I, I would never discuss any privileged conversations that I have, of course. I can tell you that um, obviously he put something out which says he. I'm so sad for the country. Like, if this can happen to the president, what about all of the classified information, uh, classified document enjoyers? That's what I have to say. What about. The millions of Americans who enjoy mishandling and mismanaging and uh, classified documents and refusing to cooperate with authorities. Like, what about the Discord enjoyers? It's a terrifying prospect for those who play War Thunder, for example. It's a terrifying prospect for anyone that plays Milsim games that, have a that has access to, you know, classified intelligence. It's fucked up sock drawer and the department of justice determined that that was fine and we all know right. hillary clinton bleached classified documents she smashed classified records with hammers and that was right. fine she was not indicted yeah what is yeah, the difference i is wouldn't the do this i wouldn't prosecute this right so what is the difference here nothing was destroyed uh these were documents that he was negotiating the return of to right. the archivist. All presidents are entitled right. to access to all of their presidential records. Every president. Yeah, has that seems like a skill issue, dog. I wouldn't be bringing up Hill Dog all that much. Uh, that's called a skill issue, bitch. Get better, you fucking nerds. Get better at destroying classified intel, bitch. By any funder, any... Anybody that would give him any money in exchange for access, he doesn't need the money. And that is the most <laughs> frightening thing to the he current political does. climate in America. And because of that, he is the biggest threat to the corrupt political system we have, to the corrupt justice system that we have, the Department of Justice that we have, that we've seen whistleblowers afraid for their lives because they know that there were briberies being taken place with the Biden family and that they are now overseas hiding. They are afraid because Donald Trump doesn't need anyone. And he, the only way that they can protect themselves at this point, the Comeys of the world, the Bidens of the world, is by making sure he has no voice and that the American people have no voice. And that is what they're doing. They're taking away the American people's right to go into a ballot box and decide fair and square who they want to clean up the mess that has become America. Yeah, and, and we saw this a couple times in the last couple years. We had an impeachment of the former president during an election year. And then you had the suppression right. of accurate information by big tech, by the FBI, disinformation by the CIA before the last election. That stole votes away from people. There have been <laughs> She's doing tricks that on it. <laughs> if they had known about the laptop before they cast their ballot in certain swing states, they would have changed their vote. And now you have this, a second election in a row. Yeah. This is actually the third election in a row that the Department of Justice, the FBI, the CIA has involved themselves in uh, against Donald Trump. ABC News now, we're hearing it's seven counts. Uh, can you confirm any of that, Alina? 
I, I cannot confirm the counts. I wouldn't speak to that. I, I can tell you this. Every single time there is an investigation that comes to fruition against the Biden corrupt family. Every single time right now. <laughs> the we Biden have corrupt family down. doesn't hit the same as Clinton crime family. I'm sorry. That ain't hitting. Every single time there is a coordinated dance that is becoming obvious to the American people because they are smart. And what they do is they say, no, oh, they're look not. At this Americans shiny are ball, stupid Jesse. as fuck. Look at this shiny ball. Let's go after Trump. Make them. Whatever you hear about the Bidens, don't worry about it. Trump, Trump, Trump. It's called Trump derangement syndrome. And now it's becoming so sick. They are politicized. I'm embarrassed to be a lawyer at this moment. Honestly, I am ashamed. I am ashamed to be a lawyer. I'm ashamed that this is the state of our country. And it is so obvious that there's this dual system of justice. This is selective <laughs> prosecution. Selective persecution. <laughs> Dude, I love this so much. Like, oh my God. It's so fake. Like, she doesn't even fucking believe any of this Jim shit. Jim Trusty, one of the president's lawyers who went to the Justice Department, I believe it was Monday, to have a face-to-face -face yeah. with the special counsel. Quit, quit being a lawyer. I, I guess then that quit. didn't make much of an Quit being a lawyer then. The special counsel. And there's also a dual track to this. They have the January 6th investigation that's ongoing. There's something down in Georgia right. we don't mu know much about, except the Giggly Wiccan is in charge of that, that jury. And then you have Alvin Bragg here in New York. Uh, is there any concern that this is just just a, a legal onslaught that, that might be too difficult to overcome? Or is the president confident? No, no, because at the end of the day, all of these indictments, the American people need to remember, they are a one sided evidentiary hearing in a grand jury that is put on by far left Democrats. Jack Smith is effectively what you would call a Democrat left wing uh, operative, for lack of better words. All he does is hate Trump, hate the right wing. So you put this guy in charge. He gives a group of people in a silo his information, his evidence, and then he gets an indictment. That's only the first step. And I really want the American people to understand this. Dude, this paired up with Pat Robertson's death, paired up with the Supreme Court decision to struck down Alabama redistricting is like insane. I don't know what the fuck's going on, dog. Shit is weird right now, okay? There's a lot happening in the universe that is, like, extremely my shit. I don't know why. We are supposed to have in the America I know, in the America that has a constitution that we're supposed to abide by, then President Trump will be vindicated on all fronts. And we've seen this. They can't bring charges. Look at the AG in New York. Three years of investigation. And then what do they say? Oh, maybe you valued something a little too high. Garbage. Garbage. It's a sad attempt for political interference. There's election interference. It is obvious. And it is so showing that Sleepy Joe is weak and that he cannot hold his office. This is oh, the desperation up. that we are seeing And it's right crazy, now. it takes five years. They still haven't done anything in that Hunter Biden investigation. They took this thing through in about, what, four or five months, this boxes deal? Yeah, exactly. Alina, I gotta run, Everything thank you so Trump much. Everything with Trump is fast-tracked. Unbelievable. Thank now you. Now let's bring in Mike Davis, president of Article 3 Project. We haven't seen the indictment yet. So what specifically do you think it's gonna show? Well, I think what it's going to show, Jesse, is what we've been talking about since August, that this is a bogus indictment of a former president for the non-crime of a former president having his presidential records in the office of former president, which is funded by Congress with Secret Service protection and federally funded staff and security clearances. The Presidential Records Act specifically allows presidents... By the way, the Article 3 project is basically the Federalist Society, but like by a different name. Bring the Presidential Records Act and for and those of you who are wondering Trump under the Espionage Act, which is not applicable to a former president's handling of his presidential records. And Fox has just confirmed that the former president has been indicted by Joe Biden's Justice Department. So there is no crime under the Presidential Records Act. All presidents have been able to access all of their presidential records. How are they saying this is espionage? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. They're trying to say that because 
President Trump had records that were marked classified in the office of former president that somehow he has violated the Espionage Act. They're not saying it's classified, apparently. They're going to say it's national defense information. But what they're ignoring is that under the Presidential Records Act, any documents created or received by the president's or his White House staff is a presidential record. It does not matter saying president. What, whether they're classified or not. And a good Very example weird. Of this You're an adult. Is a, You're an adult. Stop saying president. You're like literally in charge of another Federalist Society type operation. Classified audio recordings of his presidency Don't. stuffed in his sock. Oh my God, he keeps saying Obama it. Okay, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And if a president takes his presidential records when he leaves office, they are deemed personal and it does not matter whether they're classified. And that's that's the Presidential Records Act. The, the Espionage Act is not even applicable to a former president's handling of his oh presidential records. Oh my God, records. stop. So it's a garbage prosecution. Let's just accept that. Let's say it moves forward. I don't know whether this is going to be heard in Florida, in Washington, D.C. Do, do you know that? It's unclear. I would be surprised if it's not in D.C. because I think this Jack Smith has proven, and so has Merrick Garland, who's made this. Merrick Garland had to make this decision for the, whether to indict Trump or not. And we know that Jack Smith is a partisan prosecutor. Jack Smith got overturned eight to nothing. It would have been nine to nothing for his bogus prosecution of another Republican potential presidential candidate, uh, Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell, back in uh, 2014, I believe. And it's just, it shows a pattern that Jack Smith is the political prosecutor yeah. who the- Who could forget Bob McDonnell's presidential run? I mean, wow. And if, it, if he brings the charges in D.C., it shows that he's very political because he knows that it is a- DC, the D.C. judges are uniparty judges, and the D.C. jury pool is like 93% Democrat and like 99% Trump deranged. And so I expect this these charges in, in D.C. So if it goes to D.C., right now we're in June 2023. You got a Republican primary just starting to heat up. What is the timetable this is kind of for shitty. a trial in the middle of a Republican primary, possibly uh, a general election? Well, that's that's the issue. This is clearly election interference by Joe Biden. Clearly, this is clearly election interference. Isn't it? Isn't it funny that the, the day that Joe it's only shitty because, like, remember, I always told you Ron DeSantis is a joke. Except for one. Unlikely outcome. And that is Donald Trump is somehow unable to run. Or. Clearly, like, held back dramatically. And I, 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 I don't know what's going to happen, okay? He can still run from prison. Uh, Eugene Debs comes to mind. Uh, but it's just... Non-zero chance they're doing this now because they're looking at the approval polls and really don't want it to be technically true that they arrested him while he was leading against Biden in the averages. Washington law professor and Fox News contributor Jonathan Turley. So, Professor, you also know a little bit about history. This has never happened before in the history of this country, has it? No, it hasn't. And this is one first that I hope most people regret, even if you feel that it's warranted. It's surprising because Merrick Garland had a decision to make here, uh, not just whether there was evidence to indict, but whether that served the interest of justice. So we have to see what's in this indictment. Uh, there are a couple of things that we'll be looking Dude, for. Uh, I fucking hate this because I completely erased from my memory, everything about the document saga. Like, I deleted it all from my memory, and now I have to, like, re-upload it and refresh it by reading up on this shit. I totally, totally fucking erased it. Like, I never even thought about it ever again. 
And now I got to fucking learn about it again. Fuck. To avoid the necessity of a charge against the president. So this indictment, the, the details of this indictment are for the election year. But that obstruction charge comes with a big ticket sensing provision. That's up to 20 years. But as with many of these cases, Jesse, it comes down to timing. They don't have a lot of runway before the presidential election. Uh, and the court's going to be in a tough position uh, how to deal with this criminal case when you have the leading candidate for president who wants to be campaigning. Then there's the final issue here, which is going to get really wicked. And that is Trump could run on pardoning himself. You know, for people that feel that this is biased, that this is part of a pattern, he could turn this on his opponents and actually run on his right to pardon himself. So if he's elected, even if he's convicted, he could pardon himself or he can do so before a trial occurs. Yeah, the good old pocket pardon. So Fox is hearing that it involves obstruction and uh, handling of documents or, or mishandling of documents. Thank you very much. Yeah, the mis if, if, yes, thank so you. I'll give you, the, I'll give you the last word. Go ahead. The mishandling of documents is the one that uh, is going to be the most interesting reading because Joe Biden mishandled documents in multiple locations for a much longer period of time. And, and lastly, d in terms of obstruction, don't you have to prove intent? Wasn't it always about intent? Where, where would the intent be here? Yeah, that's why we got to look at what's in this indictment to indicate how they're going to prove that point. There have been all types of leaks coming out, uh, but you're absolutely right. Uh, this can't just be a legal dispute uh, over who gets to hold these documents under the Presidential Records Act. It's going to have to be something more than that. And we'll see if that's in the indictment. So you believe the former president, if this goes forward, could be tried and possibly convicted before the general election? And then he could well, appeal to the Supreme Court? Yeah, it's possible. It, it, it'd be a record. There's nothing funnier that I can imagine with respect to Donald Trump and his past behavior whenever he's violating the law and rules and regulations, his open disdain and his transparency in doing so that makes him the perfect criminal in any kind of minor to major violation of said law. He is so brazen that like, if there is one person who could go to jail on issues that are hard to prove otherwise, as long as you have like three and a half fucking brain cells, Donald Trump is the one guy that I believe if he actually tried to like sell documents or whatever, or if he had the even intent of selling these documents, he's the one fucking guy who would openly say it. Like every single time he's gotten in trouble, every single time he's gotten in trouble, he is very straightforwardly like openly be like, I'm doing crimes. How can we do these crimes in an even more illegal way? Let's document this. I don't know how, like, there is, he's so awesome at doing crimes in the most obvious ways. Like, he's the type of dude who's like, I, Donald Trump, am robbing a bank with a gun I purchased with a straw purchase from a friend whose name is Rudolph Giuliani. And I am robbing this bank right now. I will not be able to get away with it because my getaway car has one wheel that is busted. I'm doing this because I want to steal the money and I want to buy myself more Sudafed. The only other person that, is, that does crimes this openly is Andrew Tate. That's the only other person I can think of that just straight up is like, like tells on himself regularly. They will know exactly what they're going to lay out. They will obviously do very little once they're in that appearance. 
They just want to make sure he is there, that they have all the instructions that they can possibly get, and obviously begin to foment, uh, foment uh, their strategy. Uh, the president said this on Truth Sump, uh, Social. He called the Biden administration corrupt. He said that uh, this is a dark day for the United States of America. We are a country in serious and rapid decline. But then he adds this, but together we will make America great again. Oh, my uh, God. Remember that- when DeSanctimonious fucking was like, oh, yeah, I will not be sending Donald Trump if the federal agents want, uh, if the federal agents try to extradite him, I will not be extraditing Donald Trump. I wonder what Ron DeSantis will say now. I wonder what little Rhonda will say now that he is running for president against Donald Trump. The tug of war, Jesse, between the president, the former president, the Trump team, and the archives folks is not uncommon. That happens with virtually every single administration when you leave office. They want their records. You say you'll get your records, but then you sort of go back and forth this tug of war. If you go back to the Obama administration, it happened too. But the big difference now, obviously, is we have a DOJ that appears convinced that this rises to the level of charges of a former president of the United States. A dramatic day here in Washington, one unlike any other in our history, Jesse. And we do know that the current president, Joe Biden, did have to sign off on this case against the former president moving forward. Last summer, early last summer, legal counsel went to the president and said, we're going to move forward with this. And he said, okay. So to say that he has no fingerprints on this box hoax, as the former president says, is not true. At the same time, you have a credible informant telling the FBI that Joe and Hunter were bribed with $10 million by a Burisma executive. While- Where is this coming from? Dude, this is so fire. I don't even know if this is true, but I didn't even hear about this. Like, it's awesome. They're like literally living in a totally separate planet. By the way, he should go to jail if that's the case. I 100% think he should go to jail. Actually, fuck it. Throw Joe Biden in jail too. Okay. Given that we've been sort of following the TikTok for a while, uh, this does not surprise me. What I predicted would happen was this would happen on a Friday. It happened on a Thursday. I thought this would probably happen anyway, and I predict the Trump team will fight this vigorously, although their chances of winning, I'll have to see. All right. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. Very, very sad mm-hmm. day. Again, Fox News has confirmed that the former president has been indicted by Joe Biden's Justice Department, seven counts of mishandling documents. Uh, possibly obstruction. We're hearing espionage as well. He'll be in court on Tuesday in Miami for an arraignment. And this comes on the same day as the current president has been accused of taking $5 million in bribes while vice president from Ukraine. Dude, politics is fun again. That's all for tonight. Harris Faulkner's up next. Good luck, everybody. Politics is fun again. Let's fucking go. News alert. This is Fox News. Let's fucking go. Woo. Has just indicted former President Donald Trump over his handling of classified documents after he left office. The former president. I can't begin to tell you how little I fucking cared about the goddamn debt ceiling, dude. Oh, my God. Endlessly reading about the debt ceiling. Fucking hell, dude. I wanted to fucking kiss myself holy shit day in day out ukraine debt ceiling ukraine debt ceiling let's fucking go indict the motherfucker dude oh so good it's so much content i love it it makes me so excited it it like reinvigorates me you know what i mean it makes me it makes me feel like excited to cover the news again and it's not just like you know it's not just like dumb shit I never thought it was possible that such a thing could happen to a former president of the United States. I am an innocent man, he added. This is indeed a dark day for the United States of America. Matthew Whitaker is the former acting attorney general under former President Trump. He joins me now with reaction. First of all, just your initial reaction to what the former president just said. This is a dark day for this nation. Yeah. 
Yeah, Harry, yeah, it's good to be with you. It's a really sad day for our country. I mean, if you believe in the rule of law and if you believe in equal justice under the law, this should concern you uh, because, you know, we have what appears to be a completely political prosecution of the former president, the current leader for the Republican nomination. And, you know, it is uh, it was a rush uh, to get him indicted. You know, you look at the other cases, compare this to Hunter Biden's case, Joe Biden's case, Vice President Pence's and even, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton. And, and, and I just I can't see how the Department of Justice isn't explaining why they're doing this case and none of these other cases that I just mentioned. It's it's really a sad day, Harrison. And I, and I think it's uh, it's the stuff of banana republics, quite frankly. You know what? I, I have to point out what the former president is saying about that garage with the papers strewn all over and, and the lack of classified document security at a current president's home. All of that is true. We have pictures of where the Corvette was parked. Yeah. We know that they found documents to, that weren't even told to the American public, weren't even told to anybody outside the Biden uh, circle for months after they had been first found yeah. uh, at the the Penn Wharton uh, University Penn with his name on it, that, that place at the campus, and then two of his homes. And then it was like an Easter egg hunt. I mean, every place you look, there were more documents. Yeah. The president isn't wrong about complaining about that and saying that this is not fair. Yeah, there was a major component in the Michael Pence and Joseph Robinette Biden situation, though. Are you guys ready for this? It's called compliance, okay? When the law enforcement officials come to you, they knock on your door and they say, hey, you got a bunch of stuff that we want from you, okay? We conducted an investigation and we want this stuff back um, because it doesn't belong to you. You say, oh, my bad. Here you go. Okay. Go ahead. Go to all of my houses. Go to everything. Take it. Uh, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to have it. Now, in other circumstances, that might not work for you. Okay. But you're not the former fucking president or the vice president. They can get away with it. Trump, just like Michael Pence and Joseph Robinette Biden, was given numerous opportunities to comply. Okay. Numerous opportunities. And yet, for some weird reason, and I cannot wait for the reasoning. Oh my God, I'm so excited to find out what the actual what the actual reason is. Just did not do that. He didn't do that from the jump. He kept it, and then he lied about keeping it, and then they had to go in and forcibly take it from him, and then he claimed that it was like the worst thing that could have ever happened. It was a SWAT team raid, and now there's still even more. There's more shit that we don't even know where it is, and it's like... We don't know why he's doing it. We don't know why he chose to do it back then. We don't, I don't even understand why he did it to begin with. Why didn't you just comply from the jump? It's fucking awesome. Are you surprised? Because the president says that he was first notified, you know, less than 36 hours ago. Are you surprised at the speed at which we found out about the indictment? I mean, how does this normally work? When you say that this is a dark day for America, give us some of the exceptions yeah. to the normalities that you see. Well, I, I, first of all, the speed with which this investigation happened, you know, again, we have the Hunter Biden investigations four and a half years. Nothing has happened. We have this recent uh, alleged bribery case when Vice President Biden, then Vice President Biden, allegedly received five million dollars. And that has been languishing for years. And so, you know, it just seems like when Republicans or especially <sighs> Donald Trump, uh, you know, is under the wheel of investigation, that they do it with post haste and they throw all the resources on it. But when Democrats, and especially Biden family and others, uh, you know, are alleged to have done, had wrongdoing, that these these investigations go nowhere. And I just, you know, it's a two tiered system of justice, Harris. And we've talked about this before, but this is just another example. And I think it's the worst example yet. Yeah, it's a two tiered justice in the sense that like people like Donald Trump don't get in trouble for shit that like his underlings absolutely would get in trouble for. One of the greatest examples of this is literally Michael Cohen going to jail and like there's a point of contention there for whether or not Trump should even go to jail for the same thing that Michael Cohen went to jail for. Like, that's it. That's like a clear demonstration of a two-tier justice system, okay? Well, unfortunately, a lot of this is going to be tried in the press. We're going to see leaks, mm. continued leaks from the special counsel on what they believe their evidence is. And so, you know, what he's facing is, you know, a public trial ultimately. 
Uh, you know, but I think, you know, Donald Trump uh, seems to always get stronger when challenged. These types of things that would normally melt an average human being, uh, I think, give him strength and he continues to fight. And, you know, the question I have is, is why do we continue to have these persecutions? You know, the Russia hoax is a prime example where they threw yeah. all the resources they possibly could and tried to prove anything they possibly could. And they never got a single charge out of that against Donald Trump. And I just see this as another example of that, where the Department of Justice is for some reason, probably because Donald Trump isn't beholden to anybody and can actually, you know, take this country in a better and improved direction, that that's why they're going after him, because they want to stop him in this swamp and the people that live in it are real and they don't like Donald Trump. Do you think that he has the legal team around him at this point um, that can handle all of this? Do you see him bolstering that at all? And would you want to be on it? <laughs> so I, I, I spent a lot of time with President Trump. I just saw him in Iowa last week. Um, you know, he's going to have to determine whether he has the right people in the right positions. And, you know, ultimately, that's his decision. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, 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 I. Guys, a lot of people understandably are demanding, where is Joey Taco Penis? OK, a lot of people are understandably saying, where is Tony Baloney? OK. I get it. I hear you. I feel you. Unfortunately, that's a different court case. That's the that's the Manhattan District Attorney case, which is unfortunately not this one. This is a totally separate one um, with a totally separate legal team. So I know, I know we all want to see Matthew Calamari, Tony Baloney, Joey Taco Penis. These are very real human beings. Okay, one of them is fake, but Try to guess which one is the, actually the fake one. Uh, you will not be able to figure it out, okay? But these are real heroes. These are real heroes, and they're fighting. They're fighting for the top of the hour ad break. They're fighting so you don't see it at the top of the hour. But fear not. The only way to, you know, stop seeing those ads is by subscribing. For $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. We are so back, baby. We are fucking back. I love how they already have every talking part ready for this. Of course, they've been gearing up for this moment for a while now. Just like you should gear up for the top of the hour ad break by subscribing. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Ooh. This is literally just like, I, I feel alive again, dude. Trump is asymmetrical. Trump was a president. He had that prerogative to declassify. Biden was a vice president. He didn't. Trump had only had those documents for less than two years. Joe Biden knew them, knew that he had them for six years and never told anybody. MP Nobody Sharkey, thank you for the five gifted. Mar Lago is more secure than Joe Biden's garage. Donald Trump <laughs> doesn't have a son who is erratic and is trying to weaponize or capitalize the knowledge of his father about government and his future trajectory as a political candidate for the Biden consortium profit. So it's just outrageous. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I think it's going to be a baton relay because we're going to see Alvin Bragg get the baton and then we're going to see Latita James get the baton and then Miss Willis down in Georgia. And it's designed to destroy the the person who's leading in the polls against Joe Biden. That's what countries abroad do that are not, that are unstable and corrupt. The existing administration uses the powers of government to indict his likely opponent or possible opponent in the next election. Talk to me about the players in this. I mean, you mentioned a lot of names at the FBI and those previous investigations, but we don't know as much about the current, you know, team looking at this. What we do know is that the documents, as you said, were there for two years and that there was some sort of cooperation going on at the beginning of this between the former president and those people who were investigating. Yeah, I think that's right. And we don't really, we, what's happened in the Biden administration, they are using the power of a special counsel for political purposes. This is the second time they've done it. Remember that we got Robert Mueller because James Comey leaked a private conversation with the President of the United States, used a third party so that the media sensationalism would prompt a special counsel who just happened to be mm -hmm. Robert Mueller, a former acquaintance. And then he ate up 22 months for nothing of the Trump administration. Now we're doing a replay with this special counsel. And this is even more egregious because, again, we have the President of the United States 
who did the same thing, but to a greater degree, and this special counsel or the other special counsel doesn't seem to be saying anything. And I, I'm really worried about the reputation of the government abroad, but half the country has lost faith in the integrity of the United States government, and that's very dangerous in, in a democracy. Very well, you dangerous. know, uh, it may be more than that. I, I, I think that this is equal political opportunity in terms of how people perceive things. I mean, we started with Matthew Whitaker saying that if you care about justice, it involves every American. So it shouldn't matter how you vote it, it, when you look at this. It shouldn't. And it's a, it's a long pattern, though. We saw 120 days of riot and destruction and arson, 14,000 people arrested in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, 35 people killed, 1,500 police officers. And Wait, that 1,500 police officers is killed. <laughs> uh, exactly. Exactly. Way more people were fucking arrested for George Floyd protests in this country. Oh, uh, 1,500 cops were not killed. He's lying. Uh, but... Way more motherfuckers were way more motherfuckers were arrested during the Black Lives Matter riots or protests that turned into riots when police escalated, okay? With violent uh tactics versus January 6th, which was actually also violent, significantly more violent for that one moment, okay? And way less arrests. The only thing these people understand is like kind. If we get into that cycle, mm -hmm. we're going to descend into a, a mobocracy. Yeah, you, you're looking at history to inform the future of, of these guys. Other... Always talk about how like, oh, nobody went to jail for Black Lives Matter protests. It's like, no, they. A lot of people did. Put on Lib News, Fox News isn't addressing the story. Yeah, but Lib News is boring, dude. It's fucking boring. You know what I mean? Boring. They're they don't even know how to smoke on the Trump pack appropriately. Talk about conspiracy here. Yeah, so all that a conspiracy means legally is an agreement between two or more people to violate the law, a meeting of the minds. And so what Axel we know- Axel Dick, get off your fucking phone, brother. What are you, a Twitch streamer? Donald Trump acting alone. Holy there were others shit. in on it with him who knew that this was criminal. And I think it's fair to speculate that when we see this indictment, that Donald Trump will be cast as the head of the conspiracy. It's impossible to think so, of it. So multiple yeah. actors in a conspiracy have to be aware that the activity is illegal. Yes, because let's say, for example, Donald Trump told an unwitting person, move that box, and that person didn't know anything about that. That's not a conspiracy. That's a crime by Donald Trump, not the guy moving the box. If they both knew and had a meeting of the minds, this is illegal and we're doing it, that is a conspiracy. And I also want to underscore the fact that this dude, if they're saying this in the investigation, I 100% believe that Trump had a conversation. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Oh my God. Trump is such a fucking dumbass, dude. Oh my God. 100 P dude. He 100% would have been like, yeah, this is very illegal folks. Very illegal. You better hide it. Good. In 2020, he's enormously unpopular there, would have had a very unfavorable jury pool. In Florida, yes. Florida in 2020, yes. he's going to have a much more favorable jury pool politically. That can make a very big difference. Yeah. That's, a, that's a point that a bunch of lawyers have made to me, uh, yeah. close to him. Uh, I want to go back to uh, D.C. and Caitlin Collins. Caitlin? Yeah, and Anderson, back with us now is our senior Justice Department correspondent, Evan Perez, with new information on security at the courthouse in Miami, Evan, which is where we ex expect that these charges happened. What do you know? Well, that's right, Caitlin. We know that the Justice Department is scrambling to move resources, security resources, law enforcement resources, ahead of the former president uh, making his first appearance there in Miami on Tuesday. Uh, just to sort of, uh, you know, back this up a little bit, um, the, the, the fact is that Jack Smith has run a very tight ship, uh, very little has come out from the special counsel's office, uh, walled off even from other parts of the Justice Department. So uh, it wasn't until after this indictment was handed up, it wasn't until after the former president was notified that the law enforcement folks were told, okay, now you have to get ready to, to, to deal with the security situation, a potential security situation in Miami. And so now we know that, for example, the Secret Service, uh, they need at least a couple of days to make sure they, uh, they do an assessment and to, to make sure they are, are safe to bring the former president to that courthouse in Miami. So a number of, of resources are now being rushed in there over the weekend, again, in time ahead of this, uh, this Tuesday uh, court appearance by the former president. Caitlin? 
And Evan, that's what sticks out to me is that we should remind people Trump is the one who announced this news, similar to yep. the way he announced uh, when the search warrant was executed in Mar-a-Lago, also when he said he was going to be indicted in that hush money case in New York. He, he publicly broadcast uh, much of this information, and now he is letting yeah. everyone know that this is happening, the specific time, the specific place. And so I imagine that has to do with a lot of the security as well because of the Send of whether Biden to jail. Supporters will Send show up. Biden to jail. Absolutely, Caitlin. Look, Send I mean, Biden to uh, jail. Everybody has learned from what happened on January 6th that the former president does have a hold on a particular set of his base. And, you know, nobody wants to make the mistake of not being ready for a situation, uh, you know, should it entail. Okay, this is a serious question. How the fuck is XC able to play Lies of P? Because I want to fucking play it. And you saw how unprepared explain that to everybody me. was for January 6th uh, and the fact that the former president, uh, you know, he uses, you can see some of the, the, the language he's using on his oh, there's uh, a demo? social pro I'll post, try the demo some later. the language he's using, uh, you know, uh, as we speak, he's posting a video uh, about uh, this, uh, this, uh, this event. Uh, th those are the things that law enforcement folks uh, worry about. Again, trying to make sure he gets in there safely. Uh, make sure that it's safety for the, 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 of course, the prosecutors and the judges in that courthouse down there in Miami. Um, look, for, for months, law enforcement was getting ready for a possible indictment in Washington. It's much easier to do here. You know, there's a lot more resources here, and everybody knows exactly what to do. What what uh, was was going to be more complicated was an indictment in Miami. And so that's one reason why you see everybody scrambling, uh, even at this hour, trying to make sure that the proper resources are down there ahead of this uh, Tuesday court hearing oh, by fuck? the former president. David Axel yeah, Rogers the Trump legal team was died by, for this, but they seem to be caught off guard even by this timing uh, as of today. Absolutely. Evan, I know you'll keep tracking this. I want to go to CNN's Kara Scannell. She's actually live outside that courthouse in Miami that Evan was referencing there. Kara, uh, what does it look like right now? Did it seem quiet before the former president posted on Truth Social that he had, in fact, been told that he's been indicted here? Yeah, Kayla, I mean, it is very quiet here. There's just um, only really a, a handful of media that were still in place when Trump made that posting. I mean, all day it was pretty quiet. We did see some of the key prosecutors who were on the special counsel's team working on the documents case, and we saw them, one of them going out to get lunch. We saw them going back into the cafeteria to get some snacks, some chips and cookies. And then we also had heard at the end of the day, after everyone had gone, that there were a bunch of pizza boxes back in the grand jury room. But we we weren't sure if the grand jury had met or even that they had voted, uh, but it has been a relatively tranquil scene here today. Uh, you know, of course, if you remember back in New York after Trump was indicted on the state charges by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, it was a similar thing. The indictment came down on a Thursday. He was arraigned the following Tuesday. That gave everyone time to get into place. So you can imagine the scene here will become quite busy, um, not only the media descending, but also potentially some Trump supporters, some members of the public, uh, you know, as Evan was just explaining they will have to get a security parameter in place here. And, you know, Trump being at Mar-a-Lago, as you well know, I mean, they are used to having him transporting him around, but this is certainly of a different magnitude and dimension the first time a former president facing federal charges. Uh, you know, we, there was this run through in New York. We saw how that worked. What's unclear here is how they will handle it internally. Will they shut down the courthouse like they essentially did in New York, freezing the building, freezing the floors that the former president was going to be on? And then creating, you know, a pretty uh, rigorous system of who would be able to get into the courtroom to witness. This. Mute your mic. It's not coming from me. It's coming from her. Cameras in federal court, so the public won't get a glimpse of this, and it remains to be seen how they're going to figure out the logistics of having this arraignment take place here on Tuesday. Caitlin, yeah, remarkable to see a second indictment in just such a short period of time. Thank you, Kara. More perspective now. Joining me is our senior political correspondent, Abby Phillip. Our CNN senior legal affairs correspondent, Paula Reed, chief national correspondent, John King, and also conservative lawyer and Washington Post contributing columnist, George Conway, who has long predicted that this moment would come to pass, but it, it's historic. I mean, we've it, never it seen absolutely. a former president face federal charges yeah, it, before. It's absolutely historic. I mean, this is probably the most significant politically, uh, most significant historically, uh, most historically important criminal case since the Aaron Burr case in, at the beginning of the 19th century. Oh, it's boring. The, bo the guy also uh, looks is, funny. You know, it is stunning to see. See, it, it, CNN has like funny people too, like funny looking people, like Fox News, but they're not saying like schizophrenic shit. I argue that 
he was mistreated and he is being singled out and he's being abused. Is this George Conway? He's, he's gotten the benefit of the doubt. This, if you or any of us at this table had been a government official what? during the Trump administration and we took this volume Bro, of Bro, what is home, that motherfucking hair, dog? Oh my God. Ozempic did a number on this motherfucker, dude. Holy shit. And he grew the hair report, out? They would have been rocking, the, the FBI would have been at our doors any like within months and the fact of the matter is it, it when when this search warrant came out we saw the affidavit we saw a redacted affidavit damn he's so fucking hot FBI dude used to get the search warrant executed Killian Cowan was sucking the life force out of him the amount of information in there was absolutely stunning at the time I mean, it was shocking at the time that, the, that they, they had such a powerful case already. And simply by virtue of the fact is they found the stolen property in his office and at his home. Bro got a revenge body, but also, like, didn't change his fits. Like, that suit jacket is literally four sizes too large on him. Not to be like that fucking D workwear guy, but, like, my man, get a new fucking suit jacket, homie. You're about to be on CNN. What the, the fuck? The Justice Department has to be extra careful and extra uh, cautious and make sure that it has ev all its ducks in a row um, before bringing a charge against the former president and presidential candidate. But this, these, these charges could have been brought long ago. And one other point on the venue, I, I, there's been these suggestions that, that somehow this was a sudden change in venue. The fact of the matter is... Um, we knew back in August that there was going to be a potential venue issue, and people were discussing it. Legal nerds were discussing it, not, um, uh, not, 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 not in the cafes, not in the, not in the, not in the coffee shops of America. But there was a real legal issue because so much of he is the terrible illegal fucking... conduct that was described He's not very in the FBI good. affidavit took place at. Mar-a-Lago in rhetoric. Palm Beach, Florida. And the Constitution, the Sixth Amendment, provides that a criminal defendant here, Donald Trump, the criminal defendant, um, is entitled to a jury in the district and the state in which he committed the crime. You mentioned the Justice Department. We haven't heard anything from them yet, Paula. Do you expect that we will? How does the special counsel's office handle this? Yeah, our reporting right now, Caitlin, is that, that we will not hear anything from special counsel Jack Smith or his office. And that is... That is a deliberate choice. They must have known when they offered the courtesy of informing him that he had been indicted, that's standard, that's what you would do with most defendants. You knew that this was very likely to wind up on social media, which is exactly what has happened. But they're not going to offer any statements, any additional details, or unseal the indictment tonight. And, you know, again, that is their choice, but we have to look at how this worked out uh, with past special counsels uh, in terms of letting other people craft the narrative, not just releasing the evidence uh, or the charges. And the Justice Department, the FBI, they have been under siege. Criticism about political bias from both sides of the aisle for the past seven or eight years since the investigation at Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server. One of the reasons we have a special counsel is because the attorney general is trying to protect the integrity, right, uh, the public's view of the Justice Department. So tonight, the fact that the special counsel is not going to say anything, that we're getting most of the breaking news uh, from the former president who has just been indicted, that is something that history will ultimately judge. It's unclear, though, if this is the correct decision. Although I, I think we can probably say that regardless of whether they said something or not, the accusations of bias would always be there because this was the plan all along. Uh, you know, Trump and his allies have been trying to sow the seeds of this doubt about whether this case was significant or not. And notably, you know, even the, the people people who are running against him are sort of accepting this narrative that because he is a former president and because he is running for president again, that that uh, ought to subject him to some kind of other standard. Uh, and that is, I think, what will be tested here once we actually know the, the details of it. Uh, the, the significance of the reporting that you and the rest of the team uh, reported about that, that tape uh, in which he's talking about a specific document, we don't know whether that document is involved in this. We don't know whether that was all. But even if it were that alone, I think it really opens the door to a really serious set of issues about national security, about Trump trying to utilize the documents in a way, uh, in any kind of way, frankly. He can and not still just run. Not to peruse them, but to use them to prove a point about 
General Mark Milley. And those are really serious issues and one, uh, ones that cannot really be spun once we know the details. Yes, we, national defense information. We have not heard one word publicly from the special counsel since he took this job, yeah. which if you're talking about the gravity of the case, investigating a former president, the gravity of the issues, classified documents, potentially national security secrets, you can understand that. But if you study the lessons of the Mueller report, if you study the lessons of two impeachments, you also understand what Donald Trump is going to do and what he is doing. What he's been doing for weeks and weeks, even before this moment, and he's put it on, and he's put it on steroids tonight. He is telling his people, don't listen to this man. The FBI is corrupt. The deep state is corrupt. They're after me again. Trying to convince them, don't listen to him. Because Trump's smart. He's smart. He's cynical, but he's smart because when they if when they lay it out, if you read the Mueller report, you know, did it prove collusion? No. Did it say a lot of really bad things about Donald Trump? Yes, it did. Uh, but his people don't believe it because he poisoned the well beforehand and said, "Do not listen to anything these people say." So I'm not a lawyer. Uh, Jack Smith's biggest job is going to be to prove his case in court. We are in Never Never Land. We have never had a former president of the United States who's an active candidate and the faraway front runner in the next election indicted on federal charges that are incredibly serious. This is not shoplifting. This is not stealing a car. Uh, this is not running a bad business. This is taking the most secret, top secret documents. You know, when he begrudgingly left the White House, mad that he had to leave after he tried to fight so that he wouldn't have to leave. So the biggest challenge is in court, but the first words Jack Smith and his team do say, first on paper when we see it, and then if they speak to this publicly, are going to be critical to determine whether or not Donald Trump's argument gets outside of his base. If that's the only argument Donald Trump wins with his base, he may win the Republican nomination off it, but he's a former president because the rest of America stopped listening to him. Yeah. We'll within, see what happens. Within an hour, he was already fundraising right. off of this. I want to get back to Maggie Haberman. Maggie, I understand you're learning new details about these charges. We know there's about seven of them, I believe. What are you learning? Kaylin, we've been told through our reporting that there's seven counts, uh, that none of these counts is the same. Uh, that one is a willful retention of the documents, one is a conspiracy to obstruct, which, as Ali noted before, involves more than one person. We don't quite know what that means yet. And then another is false statements, but there are others that, that we're not aware of. Uh, a lot is going to matter when this indictment is unsealed, when we get to look at it, when we get to see the criminal complaint. We will know much more. But, you know, this tracks with everything that you and I both know about this investigation over the last however many months it's been, more than a year. Yeah, it has been over a year, but when it comes to these counts, she loves even this. though this the is her. it was braced. Maggie Haberman loves this, dude. Finally, she's back at it again, you know what I mean? She's like, this is the most relevant. Oh, new video, new Trump video, new Trump video. Oh, a rare Trump. This is rare post-indictment Trump, okay? It's not always, you don't always get one of these. It's like a Pokemon card, okay? Oh my God, it's four minutes long. Oh my God, I'm gonna nut. Very sadly, we're a nation in decline. And yet, they go after a popular president, a president that got more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country, by far, and did much better the second time in the election than the first. God damn, bro. No microphone? I'm on. Baba, koku ne alır? Ne var, ne oldu? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, the, so Donald Trump Jr. posted this on Twitter because like Trump is still refusing to get on Twitter, which is really annoying. I feel like he's doing it to annoy me individually. But uh, here, here is Donald Trump. And they go after him on a boxes hoax, just like the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax and all of the others. This has been going on for seven years. They can't stop because it's election interference at the highest level. There's never been anything like what's happened. I'm an innocent man. I'm an innocent person. Uh, they had the Mueller hoax, the Mueller report, and that came out. No collusion after two and a half years. That was set up by Hillary Clinton and Democrats. But this is what they do. This is what they do so well. If they would devote their energies to honesty and integrity, would be a lot better for our country. They could do a lot better. They could do a lot of great things. But when you look at what's happened to our country in the last three years, we were energy independent. We had a strong military that wasn't woke. We were doing so well. We were respected all over the world. We got the biggest tax cuts in history, biggest regulation cuts in history. And what do you do? You have a president where an election was taken got more votes than any sitting president in history by far, never anything even close. And they come after me. 
because now we're leading in the polls again by a lot against Biden and against the Republicans by a lot. But we're leading against Biden by a lot, a tremendous amount. And a tremendous amount. The level that they figure the way they're going to stop us is by using what's called warfare. And that's what it is. This is warfare for the law. Is that what it's called? And we can't let it happen. Using what's we called warfare. Our country is going to hell. And they come after Donald Trump, weaponizing the Justice Department, weaponizing the FBI. We can't let this continue to go on because it's ripping our country to shreds. We have such big is problems, it? and this shouldn't be one of them. It's a <laughs> hoax. The whole thing is a hoax. I love that. I love that he's like, come on, guys. We got bigger issues, you know? Come on, you know? Amongst us hasn't been uh, indicted for charges of conspiracy to possibly sell, I guess, classified documents. I don't know what the conspiracy charges are in obstruction of justice. I mean, come on. It's like, what's a little... What's a little doc? What's a little document saga between you and me? Okay, your favorite president, which I agree with. I think what what's what is that about? You know, everybody fucking calm down. It's just like Russia, Russia, Russia. Just like the fake dossier was a hoax. You saw the Durham report. You saw the Mueller report. It was all a big hoax. You had two impeachments, and they lost, and we won, and we had tremendous support. But that was a hoax and a scam. Like, and now they're doing but it like, again. No, just to you did get impeached. Seven years, even after I'm out. But it's called election interference. They're trying to destroy your reputation so they can win an election. That's just as bad as doing any of the other things that have been done over the last number of years, and especially during the 2020 election. So I just want to tell you, I'm an innocent man. I did nothing wrong. And we will fight this out just like we've been fighting for seven years. It would be wonderful if we could f devote our full time to making America great again. And that's exactly what we did. But now, again, our country is in decline. We're a failing nation. And this is what they do. I'm an innocent man. We will prove that again. Seven years of proving it. And here we go again. Very unfair. But that's the way it is. I just want to thank everybody. We are doing something very special for our country. Why is he we're thanking America people? First. I always put America first. And that's why we were in a position. Unfortunately, that position is no longer valid because they've done such a poor job. But we're in a position where we're going to make America great again. Uh, I'm innocent and we will prove that very, very soundly and hopefully very quickly. Thank you very much. Thanking in advance for those campaign contributions. Yeah, I guess. The FBI falling on their faces. Well, these guys are doing high-level mimetics. This is what our king needs. I do believe it. Donald Trump, sir, in light of your recent outbursts, I believe you may be suffering from undiagnosed anxiety and or imposter syndrome. For your own sake, please watch Bo Burnham inside immediately. Uh, I mean, he didn't give us anything on that. Like, like... I, I would have expected maybe like, you know, when you're when you're famous, when you're president, they let you grab the documents. You can grab them all day. It's fine. But when you're no longer president, they make a big deal, folks. How come? How come? Because Donald Trump asked for it to be. We've also done some really good March. reporting. So Correct. I think, yeah, but the reporting, like, yeah. but the, where's the reporting coming from? The reporting isn't coming Yes, he's allowed to run for president even from fact, jail. But from the fact that this investigation, he can be a convicted criminal and still run. All these witnesses and all these lawyers to all these witnesses who know what's going on in the investigation. And after a certain point, it pours out into the public domain as it has over the last couple and of so weeks. This has just obviously <coughs> legal significance. We'll wait to see what do the bail <coughs> arrangements look like? What does everything look like? But this also just in general. Okay, this is actually a big deal, though. Uh, someone in the chat said he didn't even attack the prosecutor's family. Dude fell off. That actually is kind of indicative of, like, either how fatigued he is or what he thinks his chances look like. Because, honestly, yeah, old Trump would have 100% fucking popped off. What's happening right now? He uses the fact that he is a candidate in order to try to make a case that he's being treated on. Sorry, he, I, I don't. 
He can he can be arrested. He can be thrown in jail. He could still run investigation to raise money to rally support. But in the long term, this is going to be a negative thing. This is a bad moment for the country, of course, but certainly for Donald Trump. Uh, and as you guys were talking about the attorneys, I mean, it just strikes me that the fact that uh, you know, the crime fraud exception was found to be uh, to meet that bar. And then on top of that, I don't know that DOJ would move a case to a less optimal venue uh, mm -hmm. if they didn't think that they had a very strong case. So it really just that. raises the, really the, the Trump team. They've been saying, well, you guys did all of these things because your case is so weak. I don't think that that's really what this evidence shows. Yeah, and instead they can avoid them trying to move the venue later on once exactly. this has already had the ball rolling. Anderson, back to you. Kayla, thanks. Joining our panel now, CNN political commentators Van Jones and Alice Stewart from the left and the right respect. The chatter said you can't run from uh, prison as a convicted felon is wrong. You can. And uh, people have. Uh, Eugene Debs did. And um, you're wrong about that. Ironic because you can't vote, but you could literally run. You could actually run for president as a convicted felon. Interference. They're trying to destroy your reputation so they can win an election. That's I'm almost certain if you were, because because if it's a federal charge and he goes to federal prison, he could literally, if he ran and then somehow won from prison, I, I wonder, I think you could probably even pardon yourself as well. I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure. As long as not, I know it's, you can't be, if it's a state crime, obviously, but if it's a federal prison for a federal charge, he technically, it's never happened. So it's so psychotic to think about, but I think. I think he could. Some question, is this only going to be an obstruction case? No, according to Maggie's reporting, there's a document retention charge or charges. And separately, as Maggie just reported, there's an obstruction angle. So it's not all about obstruction. It's documents and obstruction. Maggie also reported, she just told us that none of the charges are the same. You can have, in a federal indictment, multiple counts of the same crime four counts of obstruction, et cetera. This tells us that there are, again, according to Maggie's reporting, seven different counts. We know one of them is conspiracy from prior reporting. And then the last thing that Maggie tells us is that there's an obstruction count and a false statements count, meaning somebody in Trump's camp or Donald Trump himself knew about or made or authorized the false statement, presumably either to archives or to DOJ. So we're getting indicators from Maggie and Paula's reporting. Uh, Robert Ray, you were former uh, Whitewater Independent Counsel. What do you make of what we've heard thus far? I think the venue was probably one that the Department of Justice felt that they were stuck with because I think there are charges contained in this indictment that could only have been brought in the Southern District of Florida. So I think that's sort of the first significant thing. What, what would those, what would that be? Probably the obstruction, things that happened in Mar-a-Lago that only could have, have happened in Mar-a-Lago, that they are charging those things that happened in Mar-a-Lago. And if that's the, the gravamen of a particular charge, that would be the only place that charge could be brought. Mm -hmm. And then I think the, 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 the related to that is because it is in the Southern District of Florida, and although there's a court appearance uh, scheduled in Miami, I think for administrative reasons, you would expect this case, if it in, is centered around Mar-a-Lago, to be one that would draw from a Palm Beach County jury pool and a judge assigned to that particular vicinage. Why, why is that? Because again, that's where the um, that's where the alleged crime is is uh, is alleged to have taken place, and you would expect, therefore, to um, for the case under the Constitution, the the case is brought in the district nearest to where the uh, the, the charge is, um, is 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 located and filed, and where the uh, the facts are. Bro, that jury pool, like that that's the one jury pool where he's fucking innocent, dog. Okay. Well, he, uh, I think convicted of his peer, uh, uh, his peers in that jury pool, dude. There ain't no fucking way they're finding people in Palm Beach that are gonna be like, yeah, no, he's guilty. And as Maggie has reported, seven charges, uh, including you know conspiracy to obstruct, uh, obstruction of justice, false statements. He's out, baby. This is not just Free him. One charge of alleged witch hunt by prosecutors. This is quite serious but here's the thing we have chatter saying crime watch don't realize that we're currently doing crime watch bitch okay and the crime is donald trump this case whether it's on the crime is actually not what donald trump did though allegedly but instead the crime of even thinking about locking him up that's right folks this is a free trump uh till it's spelled backwards stream okay free trump 2020 free trump 2024 witch hunt 
And here's the thing. There's, there's going to be two com competing factions here. There is the court of law, which is quite serious and is going to come down heavy and hard on Donald Trump in the next few days. And then what Donald Trump thinks he's going to get away with is the court of public opinion and the political spectrum. And his base and his supporters are going to support him. Whatever he says, they're going to believe him, and they are doubling down, and he will be um, more emboldened with his base on this. But these are serious charges, and when this comes down, um, the the...